Now, did you know that approximately 2,000 people a month will be injured by a landmine? Roughly 800 of these people will die. In order to prevent this, we have built our EOD robot, or Explosives Ordnance Disposal Robot, which will clear out these mines and scout for any possible enemy locations. Now, as you can see here on the trifold, there's many different camos, and that's supposed to represent where our robot can operate, but that's only a few, because our robot has a very wide operating range. Now, on the turret, there um, are two ultrasonic sensors, which are scanning for any movement. There's one sound sensor, which is listening for any sounds, as well as one touch sensor, which is going to move the ultrasonic sensors up and down. Um, we then use Bluetooth technology to send the data to the receiver, where we can then sc uh, scan for possible hostile and civilian positions. Along with all the other sensors on the robot, we used a colored sensor mounted on the base of the robot instead of the standard light sensor to locate mines and or shrubs. And then, and then when it sees it, it charges and destroys it. Then it's going to back up and continue scanning for anything else. I'm Jason, and we're all grade sixes from St. Ignatius of Loyola Gifted Center in Toronto, Canada. And this is our robot, the GT68. Oh. GT68 stands for garbage truck, and 68 is the sum of all of our ages. Now we chose to do a garbage truck because in the summer of 2009, there was a big waste management strike in Toronto, Ontario, where, where we're from. The one in the front over here sentences cars or obstacles to then avoid or stop the program. While this one on the right side over here sentences garbage bins to then pick up. Loaders A and C control the steering and movement and the motor B controls the claw that picks up and puts down the garbage. And um, the side ultrasonic sensor detects the bin and activates the claw. We programmed our robot to first go forward until it senses the first garbage bin using the side ultrasonic sensor. Then it tells the claw to pick it up and put it back down. Next, it goes forward until it senses the second garbage bin and does the same thing. And when it gets to the end of the road, it senses the car and tells it to then stop. And we are... Robo Nerds! Robodoc will use its ultrasonic sensor to locate an object and move the correct distance to find the object. When Robodoc's touch sensor is sent something, the light sensor will scan its color. If the color is white, Robodoc will leave the object where it is because the object is a red blood cell, or the good cells in your body. If the cell is black, Robodoc will use its net to trap the object. This is because the object is a cancer cell. When Robodoc has trapped the cancer cell, Robodoc will send a Bluetooth message to the cancer cell. When the cancer cell receives this message, the cancer cell will surrender and the noise game over will play. We were inspired by a video of a white blood cell attacking a bacterium in a bloodstream. We noted how the white blood cell maneuvered through the army of red blood cells and only chased down the bacterium. In the end, the white blood cell caught up with the bacterium and engulfed it with phagocytosis. In the same way as the white blood cell, the robot act can be used as a microelectromechanical device, or a mass. MEMS are microscopic devices that can sense our mood. Our robot will be just like a regular robot, just smaller. Hi, my name is Richard, and this is Neil Modi, Brendan Wang, Pooja Jamira, and Anoop Kotha. And this is our team, the Remotex from Canton Charter Academy. And our main idea we got uh, is to handle hazardous material without human interactions. And we got our inspiration from the Japan earthquake when the nuclear plant melted down. So when the uh, 
tsunami, it came out and knocked the power at the power plant, and the pump was knocked out, so the water couldn't come in and cool down the radiation. And here's Neil Modi. Thanks, Richard. Um, I'm going to explain about how our project will help in the Japanese crisis. First, our forklift will proceed um, to a pickup station, um, and it will pick up the load, which is hazardous material, and then proceed to a drop-off station and drop it off, just like a delivery system. Over there, a crane will pick it up and drop it in a safety zone filled with water so it can be cooled down. And now Anoop will explain about the forklift. Thank you, Neil. Now I'll be talking about the NXT forklift. The NXT forklift has three motors to, and two of them make it move forward and backward and to turn. And then the last motor is to make the forklift go up and down. And right now we'll start the demonstration. Um, as you see, the forklift just detected the load with the ultrasonic sensor within nine inches. And now it's proceeding in, to the yellow. And when it gets to the yellow, you'll use the color sensor to pick up the load. And now, um, the, and the last sensor is the IR sensor, which um, communicates with the RCX. Now I'll be giving it to Brendan. Thank you, Anoop. And I'll talk to him about the safety zone in the arm. As you see, uh, our safety zone's lid just rose because the um, our, uh, uh, forklift sends a Bluetooth message to our safety zone, and the motor in our safety zone uh, goes up, and a touch sensor in the back stops this from um, breaking apart. So then um, our forklift continues forward following the black line, and at the uh, red marker, um, it lowers, and the infrared right there tells the crane to pick it up, drop it down, and um, over here, when it Bluetooth on, uh, this valve opened and uh, water is coming here for the effect of dry ice. But um, everything is going to reverse back. And um, a touch sensor is right here, so when the lid closes, it stops. And I'll be giving it to Poojin. Thank you, Brandon. I'll be talking about the NXT safety zone and the RCX um, crane. In our RCX crane, we used one motor for grab, a motor for vertical movement, a motor for horizontal movement, uh, and we used no sensors. And also, um, this robot will receive a message from the NXT um, forklift when it comes towards the red. And also, um, uh, this is about the NXT safety zone. We use two touch sensors. One touch sensor, when the lid goes up, it touches this touch sensor, which tells the motor to stop. There's a touch sensor over here at the bottom that, that tells the motor to stop when this lid hits it. And also, we use two motors. One motor for making the lid go up and down, and a motor for turning the screw, which opens and closes the valve. And also, we, we, made, we, made, we sync these two robots, and that, and that robot tells, um, tells the NXT safety zone to start doing its job after um, it, uh, after, uh, after it stops right there.